This video provides a broad overview on the appropriate use of Ig replacement therapy for primary immunodeficiencies. Primary immunodeficiencies, also known as PI, are a group of more than 400 rare chronic disorders in which part of the body's immune system is missing or does not function properly. Individuals with PI are far more susceptible to infections from even relatively modest viruses, including chronic lung and sinus problems that become disabling over time. For many forms of PI, particularly defects in antibody production diagnoses such as common variable immune deficiency or CVID, the mainstay treatment is immunoglobulin or Ig replacement therapy. Because these Ig therapies can be costly and are used for a number of conditions not related to PI, many health plans and pharmacy benefit managers seek to manage them efficiently. Since defects in antibody production are the most common type of PI and comprise approximately 60 to 70 percent of such conditions, it is important to note that the only treatment for patients with antibody deficiencies is uninterrupted lifetime administration of Ig replacement therapy. The IDF National Patient Treatment Survey has shown that once patients with PI are diagnosed and treated, their health outcomes are better. The survey revealed that only 13% of patients reported their health status as good or better prior to being diagnosed, whereas 56% reported their health as good or better after being diagnosed and having an established treatment plan, which commonly includes Ig replacement therapy. Ig replacement therapy can be administered either intravenously, also known as IVIG, or subcutaneously, also known as SCIG. IVIG is indicated for patients with primary immunodeficiency at a starting dose of 400 to 600 milligrams per kilogram of body weight every three to four weeks. SCIG can be given daily, weekly, every two weeks, or multiple times a week. As with IVIG, the typical starting dose for SCIG is between 400 to 600 milligrams per kilogram of body weight a month. This monthly dose is divided based on the patient's frequency of administration. Less frequent treatment or use of lower doses is not substantiated by clinical data. IgIg trough levels can be useful in some diagnoses to guide care, but are not useful in many and should not be a consideration in access to IvIg therapy. Although higher trough levels of IgG may be associated with clinical response, the goal of IvIg dose increases should be to improve clinical effectiveness and not merely to increase trough levels. IVIG must be administered by a medical professional and provides for infusions of higher doses. The larger volumes per infusion allows for intermittent dosing every 21 to 28 days. Infusions may be administered at a hospital, infusion center, or at the patient's home by a trained home infusion nurse. The downsides for IVIG use is that patients can have challenges with venous access and other adverse effects such as headaches, low-grade fever, and aching muscles or joints due to the large shift in IgG levels during dosing or suboptimal administration of the therapy. SCIG does not require venous access and is associated with a slow release of Ig from the subcutaneous tissues into the blood, which enables IgG levels to remain high and stable between infusions. SCIG is a good option for those who have adverse reactions to IVIG. Among those receiving Ig replacement therapy, approximately 60% use SCIG and 40% use IVIG. The decision regarding the route of therapy to be used must be shared by both the prescriber and the patient or caregiver to ensure the therapy best meets the patient's health and lifestyle needs. Ig replacement therapy is expensive, however, the cost of a PI patient not receiving this therapy is much higher. A cost analysis of the healthcare costs of the most frequent conditions affecting PI clearly shows a marked decrease in associated healthcare costs after a person has been diagnosed with PI and receives Ig therapy. In order to improve clinical outcomes, the choice of product and route of administration should be determined by the prescribing physician based on the individual needs of each patient. There can be significant differences in tolerability between the different IgG therapies. These differences can cause medical complications, impact patient quality of life, and drive patient behavior that can result in poor patient compliance and poor health outcomes. Switching products after tolerability has been demonstrated with a given product can result in adverse reactions. This is a decision that should be carefully considered by the patient and the prescribing physician. Formulary restrictions should not be the reason for a change in product. To decrease barriers in care and optimize clinical outcomes, payers must ensure they have updated medical policies in place for Ig replacement therapy. There are many PI disorders requiring Ig replacement therapy. Examples include agammaglobulinemia, 
common variable immune deficiency, severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID, and hyper-IgM syndrome. The full list of diagnoses with corresponding ICD-10 codes can be found at primaryimmune.org pi-dx-codes. Any coverage policy for IG replacement therapy for PI must include the criteria for the specific PI medical condition. If it is based upon recurrent infection, then first there must be a history of infections requiring multiple courses of antibiotic therapy, except for those who have the most profound antibody deficiency disorders. And second, there must be laboratory evidence of immunoglobulin deficiency. The safe and effective use of immunoglobulin requires attention to numerous issues that relate to the site of care, product, and the patient. There are no studies that have documented procedures of reducing dosages. Without any current guidelines, reducing Ig dosages in PI patients can put patients at risk for harm. In addition, if a patient receives a genetic or definitive diagnosis, then it is not in the best interest of the patient to stop immunoglobulin therapy to reestablish diagnosis. We hope this presentation will help payers and pharmacy benefit managers develop a rational approach to creating appropriate and affordable access to IG products for people with PI. This video and other related information can be found on the IDF website.